everybody, Nikki D from Five Dog Farm, and I realized with everything that's going on here, especially the all-consuming garden, that I haven't shown you the sheep. We've had them for a few weeks now. They're getting used to us. We're getting used to them. We got four Cadadin uh, hair sheep, and they're a joy. We are really enjoying them, so I wanted to um, show you what a typical morning is like, although they have been sort of different in how they come bounding out. So we'll see what the surprises they have in store for us. You're gonna meet Angus, Kate, Molly, and Lovey. So let's go see what they're up to. Hey guys, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, how is everybody? Good morning, hi Angus. This is Angus. You probably can't see him yet, but he likes to get his morning lovies from his mommy, me. He does not like to start his day without getting a bottom rub and a horn rub. <laughs> you can go see your girls. Go on, go see your girls. He is so loving. He has to be pet, otherwise he gets a little a little upset. And Kate, Molly, and Lovey are just starting to get used to us. Just last night, Kate came up to me and sniffed my hands. So that was a good thing. So I'm going to go ahead and get them into the other pasture, and then I think we'll meet back down by the chicken coop to show you what's going on there. Be right back. So that was our very first coop we ever had. I'd say it's about six years old, maybe seven years old. I hit it with the tractor. <laughs> so, <laughs> I kind of smashed the side. But let me tell you something, it has been a heck of a coop. And um, I think it's time is done though. Why I'm saying that is because I'm standing in what is going to be the new chicken coop. It is 30 by 24. It's going to be 720 square feet. And this was Mr. Blue Jeans. Um, design. I told him what I wanted and he came up with it and we are really excited about getting this completed. We just started. We're going to have, I want to keep the chickens separate, the breeds separate. I'm just trying really hard to keep blue eggs blue, green eggs green, brown eggs brown, and so I wanted to have a spot for each of them to be in their own area and that's what he's done for me including a lobby where I can have their food and all of that stuff medication and things like that all within a contained area out of the rain imagine that and even better no dirt floor I know with the sheep shed we're gonna have a dirt floor and that's the way it is but between this and the someday rabbit hutch wooden floors and let me tell you I am excited the ugh, dirt floors don't even get me started but um, this is a uh, where we're at, we're hoping to be done soon. I'll keep you guys posted on, on how this job goes and of course take you on the tour when it's finished inside. But now I need to go get the water in the garden because it has threatened rain. It's threatening it again now, but it's just not happening for us. So with our water situation here, those of you that are uh, aware, um, well, the well's just no good. <laughs> so we import our water and uh, I have to bucket it into the garden right now until that precious rain comes. So let's get over to the garden and do a little bit of watering. So here we are out in the garden. It's been going pretty well. I've learned a few things. Don't plant tons of lettuce all at the same time because nobody's going to eat all of it. So we've had we've had some very happy chickens and guineas eating eating the lettuce, and I'm going to do sequentially moving forward. Definitely lesson learned. Um, the tomatoes have been interesting. The ones in the shorter raised beds are starting to get their, their leaves curled. I can't tell if it's overwatering or underwatering because I've done both. But the ones in the taller raised beds don't have the curled leaves. So that's kind of a conundrum and I'm, I'm going to need to figure that out. Curled leaves. I, I don't have white flies on them. There doesn't seem to be any kind of a blight or disease, nothing showing up disease-wise anyway. So right now I'm going to go with the shorter raised beds aren't keeping them moist enough. So I'm going to give them more water and see if that will help. Um, 
I've replanted a few things. Uh, we have a cilantro that, that bolted, so I replanted that. Maybe not a great idea uh, since uh, the warmer weather is upon us. It's going to be coming soon. What I mean is the heat of the summer. But I thought I'd give it a try. You know, you try. I don't, I don't know it all. I can't find always the answers that I'm looking for. And sometimes you just have to give it a try and, and either succeed or fail. But I'll tell you, the beets are coming up really well. And a friend of mine was telling me after she watched the other video about the carrots that if you put a board across the carrot seeds when you first plant them, it'll help them come up quicker. So I think I'm going to try that because I just planted two more sections of carrots. We have our newer, smaller raised bed that Mr. Blue Jeans built. So now we have two of the skinnier raised beds and two of the large ones, more large ones to come. But I did plant more carrots in the skinny ones. I'm going to try the board situation. I'll let you know how that works. The radishes are coming up great. And the cool thing is, as the radishes grow their leaf cover, you know what I'm going to say, right? It's keeping the bed moister because the sun isn't beating down, so it's holding the water retention. So even though I have been mulching with straw, it is amazing the difference that the radish leaves have made on top of the straw. So that bed over there, where the radishes are, is so much moister than just the bed to the right of it. Literally, same raised bed, different feelings in the soil. So that's really cool. Um, other than that, I'm, I'm thinking ahead of, of fall planting, hoping Mr. Blue Jeans will be able to build a couple of cold frames for us. I think they'll go on the bigger raised beds here to start working with first. Uh, excited about doing that and seeing, oh, more broccoli for sure. The broccoli was delicious. We steamed it last night, Instant Pot, incredible. I want to plant um, uh, Brussels sprouts, love Brussels sprout, sprouts, kale. Uh, we are definitely peaking on our enjoyment of the Swiss chard. <laughs> it hasn't stopped growing, which is great, but my gosh, we've got a lot of Swiss chard and definitely need to get the uh, cabbage bottled. A friend of mine shared a recipe for canning coleslaw that I think is really interesting. I'd like to do that. I want to ferment some kimchi as well. So, uh, oh, and the little marble peas are coming up, which is really neat. They're a shelling pea, and I took the first one off the vine yesterday and popped it open and shared a couple with Mr. Blue Jeans, and that, that was amazing. The flavors that come out of a garden. What a difference from a grocery store. So, garden transitioning into summertime. I'll see what I can do. If any of you know about why tomatoes curl their leaves, let me know. I'd be, I'd be curious to find out what's going on. And now I'm going to go grab my water buckets and get to watering. Well, a week it has been, let me tell you. Uh, we, had, uh, we had to take the ATV in because, well, it's, it's old. It's like a 98, but it's, it's been great. We've had it here, I think, maybe a year, year and a half and it had a very expensive problem which we did get resolved except for the fact that the very expensive part for the very expensive problem three days after we got it back um, blew itself up <laughs> so the jeep brake line my vehicle um, got a hole in it so we've been doing a lot of walking which is great in some cases but when you're trying to lug water down to the garden not so fabulous. So it's been a week. It really has. Unfortunately, in the process of those walks, we um, we found some devastation left by a crow that has been on the property trying to and succeeding in getting some of the guinea eggs. It took off with two to begin with and um, early this morning it, uh, it found one of the bigger nests uh, there are a lot of feathers all over the place, so we're sure we lost the guinea that was on the nest. It was one of our teddy bears, and um, about five or six eggs that I saw were taken as well. Uh, I have uh, started a new incubator. I took every egg from that nest and uh, took it up to Gigi's house, and we have them now in the incubator because, understandably, the other guineas did not want to go to that nest. They, I think they completely understood what happened, so we are now on crow patrol. We do have two more nests that we're aware of out here on the farm. And uh, Mr. Blue Jeans and I talked about it and we want, we want to leave them. We would like very much for nature to take its course, have the guineas hatch, hatch their, their keats, and then gather them up from there. Uh, lots of reasons. They've been doing it for years. <laughs> I haven't. Um, 
didn't have enough incubators. Um, and it just, it just seems that nature's way usually makes more sense. So we'd like to have that happen unless we see the crows come back. And then uh, I think we'll go ahead and have to gather up those two nests as well. So um, here's, uh, here's what we happened upon this morning and it was a difficult sight to see. But it's always nice to look at your other animals, like the sheep, and Bonnie and Clyde and Parker and the dogs, and, um, and, and smile again. It, farm life is give and take, and, and today there was a bit of take. And, and, and that's okay, it just makes us, uh, it makes us think smarter the next time around, and, and it's just part of the, part of the circle. So, um, from the garden, that's getting bigger <laughs> by the minute. <laughs> this is Nikki D wishing you a really great weekend and I will see you all next week. Thanks for stopping by.